Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We are doing another week in the life of. We've been having a lot of luck with doing these videos where we're showing all the madness that goes on that we didn't used to film. Uh, and it's just our, our life, especially during the warm months, we try and fit a lot into a week. So this week, uh, much like a lot of the other ones, there's some car events going on. Uh, we got a bunch of work going on and of course some updates with the new building and everything else. So uh, we have a, one of our favorite events, uh, Ted's Antique Auto Picnic is this week. It's a little very impromptu uh, picnic event at an old church with antique cars on a Wednesday. A lot of really neat stuff shows up so we're going to hop in a car or two, drive over there have uh, lunch and hang out with some friends. Uh, we got a bunch of work going on shop. We're supposed to, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we get concrete this week in the new building. They're Yay. supposed to come, <laughs> but we don't know. We haven't heard from, you know how contractor stuff goes. So we were supposed to get that and we got a bunch of work going cars and everything else. Mike's trying to pack at the warehouse. So we'll uh, pack it all in a week and take you along for a ride as a week in the life of Iron Trap Garage in June. All right, so it is Tuesday. We had a productive Monday. It is really hot here this week, at least for us. Uh, it's in the 90s all week. And uh, while that might not sound bad if you live in California, uh, it is very humid here. So anybody that lives down south on the East Coast knows that when it's in the 90s, it feels much hotter when it's this humid. So luckily the shop with putting the addition on is much better. It stays like in the 70s. So. Um, it pretty much, it was like 90 yesterday and it's stuck around 75 in here. So it feels like air conditioning, which is nice. So we've been working on a bunch of stuff. Um, we pulled the 38 in, we got the glass for the windshield. So we're gonna be working on getting that in hopefully this week. I've been working on a gravel pan, which I'm waiting on some rubber edging to go along the body to finish that all up. But that's looking pretty good. Got a license plate mount on it. Gonna clean the back end up big time. Steve's been working on buttoning up the green 32 Roadster. You might remember we did the exhaust in a recent video. Um, we're just finished up getting the fan on, the radiator in, the power gen all set. Um, we have a used belt uh, because we ended up having to run a, a much shorter belt to get everything to clear and work and all that stuff. So that's on and we're gonna take it for a test drive here shortly. Steve also put in, we got this tunnel cover uh, trans tunnel piece that is a reproduction piece from David Wack that he sells on the ham. It's a reproduction of 32 one and it fits with a 39 trans. Works pretty well. Only thing we had to do is just Steve had to make a little notch for that upper cover to swing past and then he modified an old Yankee e-brake kit from the AVA kit that we had kicking around so that the handbrake can mount and fits in that slot. So stuff's all coming together. Looks kind of factory but still hot rod which is the idea of this. So we're gonna take this for a drive to finish this video up. And we also have Joe. Um, Joe is coming to help work on the Dorian Roadster. So we gotta get this car out of here. That's another reason we need to test drive is put it upstairs. We're gonna pull the Dorian Roadster in. Because it's so hot, he's coming over to do some patterns and check some seat stuff because he's working on the interior on that car today. So we're gonna have another visitor today as we try and continue to get work done on this uh, hot Tuesday. That's 
good before we before we make the neighbors too angry. Exactly. One, one quick little pass yep. is okay. But I mean, it's hot. I haven't even gotten up to 150 on the. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Temperature. I mean, given we're not, but I'm just idling it around town. So yeah. This, this thing's right. That's I cool. noticed when I ran it the other day, it was I ran it for 20 minutes and the thing was at like 150, 160. Nice. So I think that's one of the keys: cleaning the radiator out, or I mean, uh, cleaning the block out really well with rust, and then getting your radiator either cleaned or recored. Because we got a record radiator. So yeah. we don't have all kinds of rust and crap in it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Among everything else. So. <laughs> right. And, you know, fresh water pumps that aren't full of rust and yep. on and on and on and on. Yeah, exactly. All, all, all that makes a big difference. It sounds really good, by the way, on the drive. Oh, yeah? It sounds really good. It's got the perfect, like, to me, that's perfect. It, it, it makes good sound but it's not obnoxious that so you're going to wake the neighbors up. Yep. The, at least when it's corked. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously, uncap it, it's a different story. Right, it's going to be a little rowdy here. gotten up to speed it's been almost idle. Mm -hmm.
parts department should be handling this, yeah. not us. What the heck? Yeah, I thought the parts department about this. You yeah. like the parts department. Yeah. That's DH. Somehow. See, in the future, when he's here, he comes to the shop, we'll say, hey, you, gotta go to the you gotta go next door to the parts department. That's not the parts department problem. Yeah. Sorry, that one is locked up. I'm used to it. Okay. All right, so it is Wednesday, and uh, today is one of our favorite weekdays of the summer. Uh, in June, for a long, long time now, how long have I been going, there's what's called Ted's Antique Auto Picnic. It is a kind of local impromptu get-together. It's one of my favorite type of events like this that's just a fun, you know, no, no awards, nothing, just people bringing out old cars and having a good time. It's like a giant picnic. It's on a a Wednesday, which I know some people don't like, but um, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of neat that it's it's a very quiet kind of event. So we're going to be heading over to that today. I'm going to drive the Shoal car, see if Steve wants to drive the Mercury. If he doesn't want to pay Passenger Princess, uh, he might drive the Mercury. Uh, if not, uh, we're going to go and do that. We had a lot of uh, work going on yesterday. I was juggling all kinds of stuff. So I did get, by the end of the day, we got this gravel pant done on the 38. So we'll have a video coming for that. If it has, I don't know how these videos always come out, but video is either going to come out before this or after this. I don't know, but there's a sneak peek. Uh, DeLorean car. Uh, Joe was over yesterday and he did some test fitting. He got his, he made the wood for the seat uh, frames and got them all fitted to the car. He tested all our patterns and we're cutting. He was uh, cutting his patterns, uh, checking our patterns to his door card board. So he's got some work to do back at his shop. So that's why that's sitting in here for right now. So he's gonna be moving on the interior, which is exciting. And the other thing that happened yesterday that I didn't even get to film, uh, the concrete guys, um, concrete crew sent a couple guys over and they just very quickly did their wire and plastic in preparation. And they stamped and leveled the stone as well. Preparation for concrete. The word is, is that they're gonna be pouring next week I know this isn't very exciting to most people, but to me it's very exciting because it's progress. So we got wire and plastic in the building. So they're all set to pour hopefully next week unless they get an opening and they'll come sooner, but uh, next Wednesday, so in about a week, they'll be coming. So that's the update. I'm waiting for Steve and Pete to show up and then we're gonna head on out to the auto picnic and Moon's gonna sit in the air conditioning because it is very hot today, so he needs to stay indoors in AC. Right, Moon? Yeah. That's it.
So last time I put all that stuff up there it was two years ago, all these seat springs and seat frames. So I've been pulling random things down like the seat in the 33. Arden car came from up there. There's this other seat frame here. Don't know what it came from, but this is part of our problem of things getting put away and I just don't have time to go back through and we learn stuff. I now know these jump seats are for a 40 Ford Opera Coupe. The little kickstand there. And the only reason I know that is that 40 Coupe that we cut apart last year was an Opera Coupe, had those jump seats. So this is just part of our struggles that we have here is things come in, we don't know what they are, they get put away with the seats. I haven't touched any of that stuff in like two years because we have so much stuff. Look, I found $100 bills just sitting on the shelf. shelf. So I'll list those up for sale. Um, the rest of the seat springs are just going to scrap. Had them forever. Most of them are broken and shitty. Just get rid of them, move on. We don't have to move them. Um, so I'm gonna work on taking the rest of the stuff down, putting the headlights away safely, and then I can take this rack down and I'm done moving power racking out of here until we start moving parts. <laughs> mess here or my mess uh, when you have to take apart a severely stuck and broken flathead uh, you can notice over here that's my super dirty hand uh, there's a uh, reciprocating saw or saws all um, what I ended up doing almost every time you take apart a flathead there ends up being when it's stuck there ends up being like two cylinders that you can't get to the rod nuts and you can't get the cap off so you can't get the crank out so uh, I found it's easier just to sacrifice two rods with the those Milwaukee blades. They're really, you know, quick. Cut through two rods and then you knock it apart and the, and the crank comes out right away. This thing had a um, rotate over here. So this thing had a mercury crank in it. Quick way you can tell a mercury crank very fast is basically this clean out hole in the end. You can pretty much like fit your pinky inside of it. The other side is going to be very small, like uh, you could fit the tip of a pencil in. So it's quite a bit different in size there. That's the real quick way you can check it. So when I looked underneath this, saw that it had a um, mercury crank in it and all the work that was done to it, not a surprise. So I was able to save this. It's got a Potvin 3 8 cam and got all the adjustable lifters out. So we saved all the good stuff and uh, we can scrap the rest. But there is sometimes some collateral damage like those rods to get it apart and not spend the rest of your life on it. So, messy Thursday? Wednesday? Thursday, Thursday yeah. yeah. Dirty, dirty Thursday. So now we gotta clean all this mess up. Well, it's Friday and Matt's been cleaning up at the shop and the scrap trailer is full within like a week and a half. I feel like I just emptied this. <clears throat> yeah, we, uh, it doesn't help that we, we've become the community scrap trailer for our friends as well. So yes. There is some. Our buddy Justin does a lot of, uh, does repair work on modern vehicles. So he comes over here and dumps stuff as well. I have probably thrown more brake rotors than anything else. It's like Frisbee. Yeah, and, it, and there's like a modern transmission in there. There's all kinds of stuff, but 
Um, we cut up, we ended up cutting up that 46 to 8 frame um, from that sedan. Mike put it up for like $200 on Facebook Marketplace. And eBay. And eBay. We didn't even get a lowball offer on it. Um, we probably would have sold it for $100. So you can't say that we didn't try. Everybody complains when we cut and scrap stuff, but we can't keep it forever. So I cut the frame up. We kept the X section. Yeah, it's somebody, over there. It's over there somewhere that somebody could use for, uh, you know, for a hot rod or whatever. So we did that. And uh, yeah, just been cleaning up around the property. We have a lot of that leftover tin from the building. Um, they got done, the gutters and all that stuff. The whole barn company is pretty much done. Um, so I cleaned up the last of the tin and junk that they, they left behind. Um, and yeah, the trailer gets filled very quickly. And this is kind of the world we live in where you're always working on and taking cars apart and cutting things up and everything else. The scrap trailer, you know. Never ends. Never ends. So uh, we threw, yesterday I took apart multiple flathead engines. The engine out of the, um, I took pulled the engine out of the 33.3 window with the Arden that we're doing. The block that was in there was an old uh, hot rod block that had a hole in one of the cylinders. So um, I took that apart and scavenged the, the cam and all that stuff that you guys saw. And then I also took apart the engine from the 38 uh, parts car we had. It had two cylinders that were really stuck and I was tired of tripping and, and moving around it. So I just took the block apart. It's a good one to send away and get pressure tested and magnified. Oh, what size was it, did we figure out? Oh yeah, it had uh, eight, 82 and a half thousandths it was bored. Uh, it's the such an odd had, number. It literally had it on the piston. I measured it with the with the, um, the bore gauge and yeah, it all measured out. So it was, uh, it was 82 and a half thousandths it was bored. I can't believe you could get pistons that size, but that's Never heard was. of that. But the good thing is it's a perfect candidate because the bores are all clean, everything looks good. We could, that could be bored out. Um, to three and five sixteenths, and that's a really good size for a Howard engine. The other nice thing is this thing had a good camshaft, and it had a uh, four-inch mercury crank in it, adjustable tappet, so we could take basically the <coughs> guts out of this and use it in that other one, and then just get pistons, three and five sixteenths pistons, and we could put together a pretty kick-ass hot rod engine with it. So the, this engine had to give its life. I mean, it had a hole that was almost fist size in one of the cylinders. I had pipe dreams of sleeving it and fixing it but as you guys know we have so many engines um and we have a fairly not good luck with them being good yeah so this one already having a hole in a cylinder we just it's going to the scrap yard so that's what we got going on today on friday i'm going to work on making a uh, pilot bushing for the arden um for the lasalle in the arden today steve's off once in a while he gets he gets a weekday off yeah hard-working individual he is we let him get off once in a while so <laughs> i'm also going to fill the bed with more scrap from the warehouse so perfect yeah, yeah. this will be a whole whopping i'm gonna say 85 dollars is what, what i'm guessing the guess is yeah uh i'm gonna say 78.50 and Maybe. we got a word that the um concrete guys are supposedly next week um, midweek they're going to be pouring so we're kind of trying to clean up around the property too expecting them to need to get their trucks and everything yes. in. so exciting stuff going on is all taken care of it's actually a little over 150 bucks a lot more than i thought it was going to be uh, matt and i were both way off um so now i need to load an engine 
into my truck. Uh, when the building was sold, the previous owners took their forklift with them. So we no longer have a forklift downstairs. So loading stuff into the bed of our pickup trucks kind of sucks. Um, I have my engine hoist here in down by the man door. So we have to take everything out the man door. I kind of have to position the uh, or engine hoist kind of delicately so I can pick it up and then back my truck under it. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so Matt had me actually wrap up these two freshly rebuilt engines that we got at the one place in New York. Um, he has one of them set aside for a project. Uh, he would like me to bring it back so we can start working on it. So I need to unwrap it. He had me wrap them up for the move a couple weeks ago and now he decided he wants one of them. So I have to unwrap it, pull the engine off he wants, take it downstairs. Um, the hard part is it has to be on a cart, not a pallet because a pallet won't fit through the door and I can't pick it off a pallet with a engine hoist. So it's a little tricky, but I have some carts that are roughly the same height as a pallet and I can kind of just pull it off the pallet onto the cart strap and take it downstairs. It's a real process now, but you know, this is what it is. Just got to keep on moving forward. So get that downstairs into the truck. I got to ship a few things yet today. Uh, it is extremely hot. It is like 90 degrees outside. The building is probably about the same. So I'm gonna get to work before it gets too hot today. All right. So it shouldn't be too bad. This cart's pretty level with it. Pivot. went smoother than I expected.
So how was your week? It was hot and, yes. and uh, not as hot as Mike's as your week. <laughs> Still both as hot though. Yeah, so this week has been pretty, pretty crazy. I usually try and hit a lot of like local cruise-ins and drive my cars almost every night or every few nights after, after we work. And it's just been so hot that I just haven't had the energy to or interest to do it because at 5 p.m. it's 90 some degrees. So Brutal. and very very humid. So um, just been getting work done in the shop. We're very fortunate that yeah, yeah as you can see, kind of see in frame here. This is the big thing we did this week. Um, we got a lot done, even though it's been hot. The shop stays relatively warm. Like we've had over a week of 90 degree weather and i think the shop is 77. So. today is the warmest day it's gotten like a degree warmer almost every day yeah so it's like 78 today <clears throat> when you have the fan on when we're not like talking during the video it's actually quite nice in here you have some air blowing it's pretty good so fortunately we were able to work in the shop and get a lot done and we weren't like dying with the heat um but we got a lot done we drove a bunch of stuff this week which yeah. was also cool we got a bunch of cars kind of like on the road for the first time the green 32 roadster the 38 we took for its first drive um steve started is working on currently he's off today but he was working on the end of the day yesterday even doing nut and bolt check and working on we're going to do the tow um he already figured out that we had a scraping sound on the fan we didn't know what it was. Well, here the fan was, the radiator had just walked itself back a, uh, like half an inch. It was barely touching it when you'd pull out. So got that sorted already. So that thing's probably next week gonna be ready for me to start driving if nice. the weather will cooperate. Um, we got the engine in the 33, which will be an upcoming video. We're not gonna give you a full view of that yet, but um, yeah, we got to drive some cars, go to the Ted's picnic, which was really fun. Even though it was hot, it was still a very uh, good time. And, I don't know what else. Lots of tinkered on my car a little bit. Did oh, yeah. a bunch of work at the warehouse. Yeah, I forgot we actually worked on your car too. In between everything else. Yeah, gonna so. drive it soon. Hopefully next week or two. Yeah, we're we're very close on that. So this is just the normal craziness that goes on with us between filming videos and everything else. Um, and we'll keep doing these. If you guys seem to like them, we're gonna keep doing them and showing you guys all the behind the scenes, so to speak, stuff that goes on around the shop and in the iron track world. So thank you guys for following. Appreciate it. Catch you later.